Okay, here I am. I'm about to refilm in front of you, <laughs> even though you don't know when I did this. I've this brand new video, I'm doing it right now because I rewatched the blocks and beliefs video and I'm just not happy with it. I'm watching it and I'm going, yes, this is all very interesting, yo, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it in my heart. It's not stabbing me. I'm not getting that oh, feeling from it. And the blocks and beliefs video is really important because this is what you, this is why you're here. This is why you're here. So you need to hear it. You need to feel it. You need to feel this video. It needs to pain you. So I'm going back in and I'm going to do it with feeling. I feel it already. That's why I've come on. I'm in the moment. So blocks and beliefs. The reason you are here, the reason you are here, the reason you made a decision to sign up for boot camp, the reason you your behaviours haven't been right, the reason you're out of balance, out of alignment, the reason you've been overeating, the reason you've not been motivated, the reason your life isn't looking quite correct, the reason you're hiding from yourself, the reason you're shielding yourself from pain, all of the things, all of the, the discomfort you feel every single day, the depression, the agitation, whatever it is that's going on for you, the, the reason you do too much of something, the reason you don't do enough of it, the overcompensating, the undercompensating, all of it, doesn't matter where it's coming out in you, it's still coming out. And the thing I wanted to say was that this has to come out of you. The emotions positive or negative have to come out of you. They're coming out of you to tell you a message about yourself and you don't listen to it, right? This is the problem. So the stuff is pouring out of you every single day. It's going, can you uh, freaking listen to me? And every single day you go, no, no, not today, not today, like that. And so it goes, all right, I'll try, I'll try in 10 minutes. I'll try in 10 minutes. Uh, can you listen to me? Because there's shit going on in here that's really fucking needs listening to, basically. And you go, no, not right now. I'm just going to eat this piece of cake. And it goes, okay, well, I'll try again in a couple of hours. And you go, no, not right now. I'm going to go out for a cigarette. Then you go, mm, can you listen to me now? And you go, no, because I'm busy working and I'm going to work forever. Then you go, can you listen to me now? And you go, no, because I'm too busy. I'm busy with something else. I'm too stressed to listen to you. If I listen to you, I'm going to be more stressed. So it goes on. And so decades pass, decade after decade after decade, and it never, ever ends, okay? This thing, this part of you inside that's saying, hello, can you please pay attention? And you daily, hourly, minute by minute, refuse to listen to it decades as I've said before till you die potentially so a block and a belief let's go right back to the beginning and make this a lovely clear and clean line of information so that you fully understand it yes that is a ginormous spot on my shoulder I just squeezed it before I went live so I'll just leave my hand here so you'd have to look at it um Let's go back, let's go back. We've got to go back to go forward. There is no other way of doing it. You have to go back. Firstly, I just wanna start with what you're made of. You're made of unconditional love. That's it. That is it. And the reason we don't feel right is because we've lost contact with that feeling, that wonderful feeling, but it's still in there, okay? So that's the absolute most ridiculous bit of everything is that you say you can't feel it, but actually it exists within you, it resides within you. And this is why you're uncomfortable because the uncomfortable feelings are begging you to resolve them so that we can move back to unconditional love and reveal it within us. So we've got, we start with just that, we're just love, we're nothing else, the rest we learn, okay? All of the fears, all of the pain, 
all of the emotional discomfort, no matter how pathetically small you think those things are, they're not. They're completely and utterly relevant, right down to the stuff that happened to you at school and preschool even, you know? Every tiny bit, we don't undermine it, we don't ignore it, we don't poo-poo it, we acknowledge it, but we don't wallow in it. We, do, we never wallow in it. It's not, that's not what it's there for, okay? We just go, okay, these things have affected me. As much as I don't want to admit it, they have. The moments that are the most significant are, the, are yes, the big painful ones, and we've all got them. If you think about the ones that are big, chunky ones that have happened to you, you'll have a selection of those. And then there are other very small ones, countless small ones. So the ones that have really affected you are the ones in the moments where you couldn't resolve, couldn't understand, got confused, were too young to get it. You couldn't put an, a straight answer to it. You couldn't make sense of what was happening. These moments where we they bring up negative emotion within us, confusion, ne um, rejection, neglect, um, Rejection, 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 rejection. So in those moments, if you couldn't resolve it, you couldn't make sense of it, you were too young to have any perspective on it, we still look for an answer. No matter what happens, we still look for an answer, okay? So we assume the worst. We always assume the worst when, it, when these kind of things happen to us and we assume that we are in some way or shape, not good enough, not lovable, um, something along those lines. Now they've all got their different flavors because we're all different, but they do have running themes as well. So this is where the belief is established, okay? So we get something happens, the, the child can't make sense of it because it doesn't make sense to them. It hurts, it's painful, it brings up negative emotion and then that negative emotion gets attached to the thing that happened, that occurrence, okay? That's how a, a, a belief is established, okay? And so you imagine we've got millions of these, but it's the negative ones that we need to be remembering. Uh, the negative ones we're focusing on right now because that's what's relevant, okay? Because they're the ones that are affecting you negatively now. So then your survival instinct kicks in and we go back to being an animal and survival instinct says, okay, if I puked when I drank a pink, uh, strawberry milkshake and that caused me to feel very upset and embarrassed and ill, then I'm never going to drink a pink milkshake again, a strawberry milkshake again. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? Um, so, so that mechanism kicks in and it doesn't matter whether it was just an emotional occurrence or whether it was a physical, whether it was tied up with a physical. The physical ones are also very powerful. And what happens then is that you, a record starts playing, right? The record plays and it never stops. It never, ever, ever stops till the day you die unless you resolve it because it, it was that no resolution was brought to that moment. You didn't get to tie a bow on it. All you got was confusion and pain. That was it in that moment. Even if, like I said, it's only mild, it still counts. It still had a profound effect on you, very probably, very probably, not necessarily. Okay. So those of you that are sitting there thinking, she's making a big deal out of nothing. Why is she overthinking everything? Why is she uh, making big of, of, of such tiny things? I'm not. I know what I'm saying. I'm not saying this is a matter of opinion. I know for a fact that this affects people because I have worked with so many people. This is part of what hypnotherapists do. They take people back and resolve these issues so that you can be free from them. So what happens next then? That, that's the belief, that's how the belief gets established. And then what happens when that record is playing out in your life? So you grow up, get on with your stuff, make decisions. You start making decisions for yourself, right? 
So no one's making decisions on your behalf anymore. You start living your life how you want to live it. Um, however, you're not, you're not really living it how you want to live it. You're living it in avoidance of the beliefs that were established. Okay. So we need an example now, right? So I've got to quickly think of a really great genius example to completely inspire you. Um, okay. So we've got the child whose artwork was criticised by the teacher. And so therefore, the context of that isn't important. It wouldn't necessarily be artwork that you would avoid, but it would be getting negative feedback from people. Okay, because in that moment when that occurred, you felt negative emotion, but also intense vulnerability because of the criticism. Criticism is completely and utterly linked to rejection. And every time we go anywhere near rejection in our lives, um, we feel intensely uncomfortable, anxious, scared. And we go back to animal instinct where we're being thrown out of the group of chimps, which means we're going to die. Okay, so we'd rather avoid it because, of course, the instinct tells us it's die or be accepted. Okay, that's why it's so hard to receive critical feedback. Even if you're rationalising the shit out of it, it's still hard to receive it. Okay, so now we've got um, we've got the child that's been criticised at school for their shitty artwork, and they're devastated by that. Right, that's going to stay with them for the rest of their lives, even though it was only a tiny thing. It's still going to stay with them. So through their life, they'll go into situations, but they're going to try and avoid criticism. Okay, so now we are living as a person trying to shield themselves from emotional pain to protect your heart from being hurt, as I said in the first live. So instead of living as you are, as the person you are and taking risks and exposing your creativity, exposing the real you, you're not. Now you are living your life hiding the real you, hiding your creativity, hiding your true path. The reason that you are here in the first place is to express yourself and be the person you are and bring that to the world. And you can't do that now because you believe that if you do, there's a high risk that you, you will be humiliated, exposed and rejected. So instead of living your life going like this towards what you want, you start having to do this to avoid emotional pain. And then we add things on to those layers. They just keep getting added on and added on to. So then we're going into things like you have a you have a relationship, you get rejected. So then what do you do? Do you try for another relationship or do you just stay single forever? Whatever, whatever it takes to avoid that rejection, right? And it goes on and on and on and all the layers build up. And then I end up with you <laughs> at boot camp and you're saying to me, <clears throat> I'm not happy. You know, my energy is going into things that I don't really want it to be going into. I'm not being the person I want to be. I'm not, my job is not who I am. My personality is not who I am. My relationship is not who I am. No, because you're too scared to be who you are. Because being who you are makes you vulnerable and makes you feel like you're very likely going to get rejected. And so can you understand that, yes, to a point you can overcome that by being courageous and putting yourself out there anyway. But a lot of people are so scared of that because it is as scary as putting your life at risk when you do that. So can you understand that if you clear you go back and clear the initial belief that was created, that moment of rejection and confusion that couldn't be resolved by that child because they didn't have the tools to deal with it. And let's face it, a lot of adults don't. You clear that moment and heal it, then everything else clears like a long chain reaction, like an electrical wave, like a wave itself like um, knots being undone. And, and, then, and then in your current moment now, as you're living now, you become less scared, less affected by rejection.
which means you can then do take the risks, expose yourself, allow yourself to try and be in a relationship, allow yourself to be creative and show people your creativity without fear of rejection. Be the person you are. Be the person you're meant to be. Listen, and then all of those voices inside you screaming at you to pay attention start to dissolve away because you are being the person that you are. Because you're finally being the person showing up as you, not the person that you think you should be, not the person who's trying to avoid emotional pain, but the actual, actual person underneath all of that, which is the person you were born as. And it is flipping amazing. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And when you arrive in that place, everything starts to feel good. Everything. And it is completely and utterly possible to be there. The only thing that's stopping you is you. So a block is the point at which you go to do something and find that you simply emotionally can't do it. You can't get beyond a certain point. You try, you use effort and action to try and get beyond it, but you can't. It's like an elastic band, it just pulls you back because the belief stops you. So the belief is what happened initially and the block is the fact that the belief exists, it stops you being able to take the action. So I could say, I'm a creative person, I've created this wonderful piece of artwork, right? A, a, a traditional oil painting, let's just say for argument's sake. But because my art teacher criticised my work when I was six years old, I'm terrified of rejection now, utterly terrified of it, because my animal instinct says I might die if I get rejected again. So therefore I'm shielding myself and protecting myself and I may not even be able to paint the painting. Even that might be hard for me to create it. But within me, my, my inside of me, my soul, my being says, paint the picture! Like that, it's screaming at me, paint the picture. And I'm saying, but I can't because it's going to bring me emotional pain if I do. And, and you're in this battle constantly with yourself. Inner conflict is going. You're betraying yourself by not honouring who you are, by not bringing this wonderful piece of art to the world, for the world to see and appreciate. Yet, you know it's there and you can't do it. And no matter how much effort and force and action you put into it and your own personal energy to try and make it come, it won't because the belief still exists. And so that's the block. The block is the moment when you're trying to achieve something and you find that you just go round and round and round in circles. And that, if you've managed to listen this long, well done, because I know it's freaking long. And that is why you can't lose weight. <laughs> in a nutshell, that is the reason you can't lose weight. Right, because every time you try, you're over-efforting, you're trying to control it, you're using all of your energy, you're overcompensating because you know that underneath that is a part of you saying, you don't deserve this. Who are you gonna be if you're thin? You're gonna have to be amazing if you're thin. People are gonna think that you're super confident if you're thin. Are you super confident? No. And all this stuff's gonna be going on underneath. You don't deserve it. You're not good enough. Who do you think you are? That's what's going on underneath. And wherever there's a conflict, there's zero success. Okay? So no amount of willpower, no amount of energy will overcome this. You have to clear the block to move forward. And all we have to do is just bring love and healing to that moment of pain and bring it resolution where it had none in the first place, in that moment, it didn't get resolution. It was just left as this moment that was unresolved in your life. And of course, we can bring it resolution very quickly and easily. And that is what we're going to do. So I really hope I've got you with this one. And I really hope you feel what I'm saying, because 
it is vital that you do. And if you can be bothered, listen to this twice, three times, a million times until you understand it. The reason you're stuck is because there is a conflict. And the reason there is a conflict is because you have a false belief sitting in there somewhere stopping you from being the person you want to be. Thank you. Love you. Bye.